to conservative rivals of the president. Based on the latest election results, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad will not be able to have much of a say in choosing his successor. It effectively means that a candidate loyal to Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei will likely be the next president. With IRN USA Radio News, I'm Sean Scott Ferguson. Oh man, whoa, 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 whoa! This is too much fun, I was not gonna miss this! I mean, you actually referred to me as, as Kung Pao Chicken! Kung Pao Chicken! Only The Rock could refer to me as Kung Pao Chicken, it's genius! It's absolutely brilliant! Because every single Chinese restaurant you go to, it's always there. And this is perfect rock. The rock comes out, does his shtick, holds the millions in the palm of his hand like only the rock can do. But I must admit, I didn't come out here to swing from the people's strudel or whatever you call on your penis nowadays. I came out here to tell you you were right. You're right, I am that guy. I'm the guy who runs you down when you're not here. But as usual, just like everything else, you're only half right. Because I'm the guy that runs you down when you are here. You see, these people love The Rock. I was one of these people until I got to meet Dwayne Johnson. And Dwayne Johnson is a self-centered, egotistical, see-through son of a bitch that wouldn't give a rat's ass if this company closed its doors tomorrow. Now I'll tell you something, Jack. I don't need words like respect and loyalty to trend worldwide just like I don't need my notes for my promo on my wrist. Nice tattoo. So here's the skinny. April 1st, when the millions see John Cena versus The Rock, John Cena is going to be eyeing up Dwayne Johnson. And I don't like Dwayne Johnson. You probably make your boobs bounce. There'll be a thing on your eyebrow that looks like the people's eyebrow. But I'm going to be looking into the eyes of Dwayne Johnson and see a man afraid. Because you're going to be looking at a dude who may not have ball, but a dude who is going to beat the hell out of you at WrestleMania, Jack. Oh, carry on. Continue trending. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. Tell me. He didn't just say that. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. The tower of power, too sweet to be sour, funky like a monkey, holy yeah. And now, here's your host of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry. It doesn't matter what your name is. Really? Yeah. Yes, we are on, and we don't even need Worldwide to trend worldwide. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you. Man, do we have a lot to talk about. Of course, The Rock and Cena face-to-face on Raw this past Monday, and oh, did they get into a war of words, and uh, a lot of them... Gosh, I haven't had to do this much censoring since uh, TNA a few uh, few months ago. But uh, yeah, they definitely got some. They definitely got some jabs at each other. The notes on the wrist. That was a rather interesting development. I didn't see them. I'm gonna have to go back and look a little more closely at Rock's wrist to see if uh, see if we've got those cliff notes on his wrist. See, I'll admit, I've got notes. I've got pages and pages of notes in front of me here. You can hear them rustling and whatnot, trying to figure all that out. We're gonna hear a little bit later from the uh, other noted talking points of uh, Chris Jericho and CM Punk, which I think actually overshadowed. The Rock and John Cena, and you'll hear. I've got a few more minutes dedicated to uh, to Punk and Jericho talking about the battles of the best in the world. So we've got that to talk about. Also, Vince Russo, he finally has uh, spoken up regarding his uh, departure from TNA. I've got that coming up for you. A uh, bit of a uh, programming note. We're only here until 12.50 today. We've got high school basketball coming up at 12.50. So if you usually tend to call toward the latter portion of the hour... You definitely want to get in early so that way you are not shut out. Also, some Facebook feedback. Facebook has been going uh, nuts over at WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly, and uh, so much so I, I, it's hard for me to keep up, at least within the last hour. Mike chiming in. 29 days today until WrestleMania 28. Anyone remember the WrestleMania fever thing I used to do 
I definitely got mania fever. What is everyone's thoughts about Cody against the big show for the Intercontinental title? Are they going to give show an IC run? Of course, if you missed it on SmackDown last night, Teddy Long booking for WrestleMania, the fifth match now on the card. You've got Cody Rhodes defending the Intercontinental Championship against the Big Show. He's been needling him as of late, uh, showing various uh, Big Show WrestleMania moments, which have been uh, rather embarrassing to say the least. The Big Show, not exactly noted for a stellar WrestleMania record, definitely nowhere close to The Undertaker. In fact, he's probably a lot closer to Tito Santana, who uh, he was the record holder for one of the uh, worst that I remember at uh, two and seven. I have to double check to see what uh, the big shows was. I'm sure somebody will have that for me coming up rather shortly. But uh, I don't know. Uh, giving a show an intercontinental run at this point, it kind of be like about six, five and a half, six years ago when they gave Ric Flair a brief intercontinental title run. So uh, kind of hard to say where, uh, where, where they're going to necessarily go with that. I have a feeling that show's going to get another WrestleMania loss notched onto his belt and... Uh, that's going to further Cody Rhodes because, I mean, he's got more of an upside, obviously, being in his mid-20s as opposed to the Big Show, who later this year will be turning 40. And uh, obviously, with him being a big man, I mean, you look at you know the only other measuring staple, really, Andre the Giant, things really started to wind down for him uh, eh, right around 40. Or well, a little bit after that. 41, he was in WrestleMania 3, but... Uh, it wasn't until you know a couple of years after that that things didn't work for him. So how much does show have in the tank? I guess we'll have to find out. Also, uh, John from the Northeast, he's always known for a laugh, but he's actually got something. Uh, he's pulling a Lance Storm, if I can be serious for a minute. He said, with uh, the Philadelphia 76ers giving away pieces of the floor, Wilt Chamberlain scored 100 points on. That's uh, a little bit of noted Philadelphia uh, trivia history. Uh, Yesterday was the 50-year anniversary of uh, the game where Wilt Chamberlain scored 100 points on his own in basketball. Uh, a feat never done before and probably won't be done again. And uh, they did a giveaway where you got a 2 by 2 inch square of the, uh, of the floor. John wants to know, what WrestleMania ring would you guys want a piece of the mat from? Uh, also, that floor piece is really nice. I was there last night and it was an amazing ceremony. Uh, I don't know. I know that a while back... Uh, WWE did give away uh, bits of the mat from WrestleMania 12 where Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels had the Iron Man match. Now, whether they have more of those, I mean, that, that's an interesting topic. Uh, that's one I have to think about. I'll have to come back from the commercial break and uh, hopefully I'll have an answer there because I've got a few jumping in my mind. I mean, immediately jumping out at me, you'd want to think WrestleMania 1, Hogan and Mr. T against... Uh, Piper and Paul Orndorff, obviously, for that history. Uh, you could go WrestleMania 10, where the infamous ladder match uh, between Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon was, Madison Square Garden in both of those cases. And for a bit of a personal tie here, even though, well, I mean, Austin and The Rock, you can't get uh, much better of a main event than that, although the match itself wasn't exactly one of the greatest ever. But uh, the fact that it was here in Philadelphia, that kind of has close ties uh, to me there as well. Perhaps uh, from... Uh, Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair, their uh, their epic battle from a few years ago that uh, put Flair into at least WWE retirement. So, I mean, there there are a few that I would think of off the top of my head. I'd have to really you know sit and think about it to narrow it down. But uh, that just having popped up on the board not too long ago, uh, that's pretty much the best answer I can give to that. Uh, lots of other stuff definitely to uh, talk about. As I said, we're only here until twelve fifty. And uh, a note for next week, we'll definitely be back and better than ever. And uh, also, after my show, a little something to check out, courtesy of our friends over at George's Cards and Collectibles. Uh, you can check out former WWE superstars Maurice, John Morrison, and Melina, all courtesy of uh, George's Cards and Collectibles. That's going to be next Saturday, March 10th. They'll be at the New Falls Road location from 3 until 5.30. Uh, so, obviously, I'll be here from noon to 1, and then from uh, 3 to 5.30, you can go on over uh, right down the road here to New Falls Road and check out John Morrison, Melina, and Maurice. They'll all be doing autographs and photo sessions over at George's Cards and Collectibles. Wow, I don't even know where to go next. There's so much to talk about. Uh, well, we'll, we'll, go, go, we'll go back to the audio clip here. Of course, uh, The Rock coming out, running down Cena. I didn't exactly get a lot of uh, audio from that. I mean, well, there was plenty of audio to get from it, but I don't know. Between the varying chants of Fruity Pebbles and Lady Parts and uh, 
Kung Pao. Well, uh, other words that I can't necessarily use. I felt it better to kind of go with what John Cena had to say. I guess you could call it a little bit of laziness as uh, The Rock was definitely... Th- he, he, he would make the editing... Uh, Quite extensive, considering the uh, various line they had used, and of course uh, mentioning a certain body part of uh, of Cena's that apparently uh, was missing due to the camouflage. I thought that was kind of entertaining as well. Want to know who do you think could have won the uh, the, the war of the words there between uh, John Cena and The Rock? Obviously, it's more of a battle than uh, than necessarily. Uh, obviously, they've got a long way to go as we are four weeks away, and well, four weeks in a day away from Wrestlemania. Also, Rat Boy chiming in. We did talk a little bit about it last week. Uh, speaking of Philadelphia, Helen Cell is going to be uh, here in Philly October 21st of this year. Uh, we will be hosting that pay-per-view. I don't know. I thought we were going to be getting TLC back in December, but they threw that to Baltimore uh, midway through the year, so I'm not quite counting my chickens before they're hatched on that one. It's obviously a long time between now and October. Call me a bit skeptical, but uh, that's kind of where I'm at at this point. Anyway, let's uh, let's go ahead and take care of business, and then we'll uh, we'll get to uh, we'll get to the phones on the other side. We've got plenty of room for you. Two one five nine four nine thirty two thirty two, and toll free at triple eight nine two two twenty one forty nine. So we've got to talk about uh, Vince Russo. He finally speaks up uh, regarding his departure from TNA. Some not-so-good ratings uh, for TNA as far as impact goes. Actually, yeah, some really not-so-good news with that. Uh, Edge's new movie, Bending the Rules. We'll talk a little bit about that. Also, uh, looks like Money in the Bank is back. We've got that going on. And uh, also, uh, in, in honor of Wife Swap, apparently now we've got GM Swap, courtesy of the WWE. We'll talk about that as well. Also, look at Victory Road, which is coming up a week from tomorrow. So far, four matches on the card for that. And uh, speaking of Cena as well, we also will talk a little bit about his adventures with the Daytona 500, as it was certainly interesting. Let me give you the numbers. 215-949-3232. Toll free at 888-922-2149. If you're a little shy to get on the air, we've also got the Facebook page, WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly. And in case you didn't know, let me make sure to let you know that if you miss the show for whatever reason, we've got archives up on YouTube. Just type in WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly into YouTube, and they have archives of shows probably going back all the way to October at this point. And I've been pretty diligent about putting them up on a weekly basis. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com.